right guys, right. So it's New Year's Eve, Eve, uh, 2023-24. I'm at a job where we came out under an insurance policy from an insurance provider. We said we think the boiler needs a pump. That provider then, something happened, I don't know what happened. It never got repaired and British Gas have come out and said it needs a PCB. That was yesterday and that's gone down again. So this, I think this job's been going on about a week. Customer is ill and I've just come out to try and find out what's wrong get a correct diagnosis on our part and potentially get this up and running for the customer. This is all free of charge, this is like a, a courtesy uh, from us to, to try and help out a vulnerable customer. So I'm gonna go in there now and we will see where we're at. You can see the van's a mess. Um, I have my bag. That crap. So here we are, uh, boiler's off at the moment, we're going to turn it on, no fault currently, on there, let's run a hot tap, got them on, Okay, so we've got demand, it's not doing anything else currently. And obviously this boiler will prove the pump, it will prove the air pressure switch. Right. So it's coming up with a pump fault. So the very next step is quite easy. Let's check if the pump's getting power and if it's running. Okay, so we've taken the cover off. Visually, this is where we're at in here. We do have a leaking switch. So on these boilers, on on this boiler here, which is quite unusual because it's got the preheat. So this is the, um, let me get shadow of that. It's the instant AEE. It's got that preheat knob and it runs hot water through the, uh, through the expansion vessel on this boiler. There's two connections for the expansion vessel back there. Uh, one, the red one, and then there's another one there, it's that compression. So it runs water through the plate, through the vessel as a sort of preheat. Uh, so pump proving switch is, so I'm just looking there, the pump proving switch is this bottom one, and that there is the domestic hot water flow switch. So providing they're on the right way around, which I don't know, but I can usually look. A wiring diagram sometimes, here, yeah, you can colors on that to find out if we've got the right flow switch so let's have a look here so basically the top switch should be black and white and the bottom switch should be red so the one we want is the red one there and if you look looks like the other one is leaking onto it so that's not going to be great but let's see if the pump actually gets power now because someone's saying PCB the fault is gone let's see if when we run this, we get power to the pump. This is just a quick, rough method of finding that out. Running the tap. Oh, shows we've got power there. To the pump. Yeah. Is the pump running? Feels like it is. Doesn't feel great, but does feel like it's running. So now we need to see if the pin on that mic switch comes out. That's the pump proving switch on this boiler. So we think we got power. We haven't checked for 240, but, but this is quite a good uh, thing and it only works from 200 volts up, I believe, somewhere on there. So there you go, sensitivity 200 to 1000. Should have 240 then. We'll double check that in a sec. It feels like the pump's running as well. Um, obviously we can remove the centre screw and check that, depending on how much water comes out. So. Not too bad right now. I'll run that tap while you look at that. There you go. The pump runs. Next, let's check the switch. Tell it, see if it's telling the PCB that the pump is running. Oh, 
obviously you can see the switch has been getting water dripped on it. I'm gonna turn that off to check it. Take that off, take that off. Now these do have to come out quite far and if they look cruddy, like that one, they sometimes don't come out far enough. So that could be our problem. The switch isn't wet inside it looks like. So that's good. So let's see what happens now. I'll turn this back on. All right, so you're watching that pin on that switch. Pump runs, came out. Coming out, looks like it's coming out okay. Coming out. Now we're gonna check if that's far enough. So we know the pump runs, we know that switch appears to be working. So now we're gonna check this box of tricks here to the PCB and see where that's at. Okay, so all I've done is take the cover off, follow these two wires back. They appear to go to this plug here. All the, all the wires that come in this side appear to go onto that plug, yeah? So I'm gonna take that plug off and I'm gonna make and break that switch while checking at this connection. And by making and breaking that switch, we should get continuity, no continuity, continuity here. If we get that, then the switch and the wire is good all the way to the board and it will be a board fault as long as that pin's coming out far enough. Okay, so taking the plug off, holding my probes on there without them touching. I've already checked that my probes will make it beep and now I just need to use something else to make that switch in there, make and break that switch several times. Um, and try and hold the phone so I can film it for you guys. Okay, I'll try and hold you here. It's not doing anything, is it? So, hopefully that's filmed because I was holding it with my neck. So the PCB isn't being told the pump is running. So let's open up this switch and dry it out and see what's what. So I went out to the van, I was hoping I had this part. I don't have this part on the van, I was sure I did, but I don't. Um, but this is my diaphragm set and that, and I've got a bucket and that in there. So I'm gonna split this open now, clean up all the contacts in here, dry it up and see if I can get this to work. Um, if I can, then I will take that one apart up there. And obviously the stuffing box or well, the gland on that has failed and that's why that's leaking. So I'll sort that out and then that should fix this boiler, hopefully, we'll see. switch there it is it is wet okay so mark switch has failed I'll see if I've got some contact cleaning so we can maybe get it working so I've given it a good spray out with some carb cleaner. Uh, it's still nothing's happening, so I'm gonna split it here, you see I'm just opening that up, and I'll try and take the contacts out and actually clean them, um, and see where we go, because, I mean, the bottom line is the boiler's not gonna work without this working, so if it falls apart, it falls apart, because it's either it's gonna work or it's not. And either way, this is gonna be the culprit. So let's uh, risk it for a biscuit and see what happens. contacts are there and they are burnt so we can take that out and clean them and we'll have this fixed 
the bottom one there doesn't look too bad but unfortunately that's not the one we need the one we need is that the top one which I can't get focused on is that one there so the one we actually want is the top one there that's not working at all you see how filthy it is so I pulled that bit out and I'm getting right in here Again, my nails are terrible. Tell me about it. I'm going to come tonight. Just scraping the button on there. Make sure that button has good... Make sure that has connection with this. And it does, yeah? Let's put that puppy back in there. Like that. Maybe I've got it. It's not great. Nearly there though. Nearly there. I'll keep going at this. Giving this another good clean, giving it a good spray out with car clean up. Get this piece back in there, like that. I'm going to test it again. So, cleaned out that micro switch, so just get that back together now. Now, I need to dry out this box. Get all this back together and then we'll have a look at this that's leaking. And this is just a stuffing box on the front probably. I don't know what this is here. It's like there's a bit cold or something. I don't know. But we'll get that off and we'll deal with that afterwards. So now we've checked that all the way to basically to the PCB. Okay, so that switch now works. I've cleaned this up here. I'm going to get this back together, get that plugged on the board. Then I'll protect this from water from above and I'll just check it, see if the boiler's gonna work. If the boiler's gonna work, then we know if we fix that leak there, we should have this sorted. Okay, back together. I also found on the screw on the floor, just when I, I dropped that little red bit and when I was hunting for that, I found one of the screws on the floor. So, you know, that's now more better. Um, we'll get this on and get that bit done. Okay, so Put a bit of plastic there for now, just so that can drip away and not damage the thing I've just fixed. Um, let's turn that on. So if this fires, we've uh, found the fault and fixed the fault. Again. On and lit. That's the domestic hot water flow switch there. Um, well, it doesn't want to come off. I'm guessing this is going to be quite rusty. Oh yeah, it doesn't want to come out at all that. Let's grab that with some mm, a little bit crusty. There's the gland that's leaking. I'll check if I've got one of them in here. As you see, this is just lots of diaphragms and stuff. Glands, and there's the one I need right there, look. Isn't that nice when you have it? Water off, let's do that. So, just pop that 
Oh. Good. Should be able to undo that. The tap is higher than that, so I'm going to leave the tap closed. And I will say one thing about these. They're very prone to cracking the copper. So you really have to hold this piece tight when you undo this, otherwise you will crack the uh, the copper fittings here when they go onto it. And it's a that's I don't know an hour and a half of messing about. You can resolder the crack shut and reuse it. I've done that several times to get me by, but I don't want to have to do that. So just so you all know, this is how I tackle this side panel off, and I can grab that with a pair of grips from sideways on, I'll grab that piece with a pair of grips sideways on, then I can get a spanner on that. So I'm gonna undo that now, I can't video that, it's impossible. Obviously you gotta make sure that that metal washer is on the back of it, yeah? Obviously it is on this one, I know. Oh, I've just said that and it isn't. <laughs> oh, there you go, it was on there, I've dropped it somewhere, but there we go. Back in. Get that nipped up. Obviously I've pulled the diverter plug off and the overheat stack wire off to give me more access in there like that. So we'll just work the air out of that and that should be it done. Okay, so it's all back together, no leaks. Um, I will, I'm gonna do obviously the most important checks on any boiler or the safety checks. I've already done the visuals of the case seal, uh, the combustion chamber, the heat exchanger, the flue connections inside there, they're all fine. The bottom case seal is slightly hard, but still got some give in it because that's a common problem on these. Uh, the little cork seal is still in, although it's starting to, you know, move about. It's still in place and holding that sight glass. So yeah, 26 nine checks, um, and then uh, what are we on? We are on gas. Let me just turn that off for a sec. So yeah, 26 nine checks, and then this boiler is repaired. So obviously, like I say, most important checks are now. Probably meant to be at here. I can't even see it, 12.4 millibar max. Oh, we were just on it, it's creeping up there, it might get there again. But it was there. You just missed that, I saw it with my eyes. See the cork seal starting to move a bit, that does happen on these, but it's still in place. Let's get a combustion analysis done. I'm gonna go outside for that, because I don't wanna go back to the van for the right size Allen key. So here we go. I've got the old outside tap analyzer holder in operation. Looks quite stable. Very stable, in fact. So we are going to call that A-OK. -okay. Obviously, I'm doing my visuals on this. The closest thing to that is probably that air vent. Maybe that door. Either way, it's all fine. POV actually runs down to the ground, which is good. So, yeah. All done. All packed up, ready to go. And before you all start moaning... I top the pressure up. Uh, boiler fixed. So unfortunately I'm going to give our engineer a 3 out of 10 for that. And I'll give British Gas a 4 out of 10 because they still ain't, weren't going to fix it, were they? Um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's put this stuff back on the van and on to the next one. Okay, so that took me an hour and 42 minutes. Um, Obviously with filming and whatnot. I would say if I was if I was not filming that, I could probably do that in about an hour and twenty. I'd say it added twenty-five minutes to film it and record it and explain things. I'd say twenty-five minutes, half hour. So really that's a quite a quick repair. The part there I think is it comes with a diaphragm, if I remember rightly, and I probably paid about four quid for that. And obviously that mic switch needed nothing but cleaning. That actually probably took a good 10 minutes to get that sorted um, but yeah I'd rather be doing this I'd rather be working on the boiler attached to that if I'm totally honest yeah but anyway 
for you guys out there um, and it's a good one for our engineer who went there because obviously I will uh, edit this video put it together and send it to him and say watch it you um, like and subscribe subscribing really helps me out it gives me the motivation to actually do them and get these videos out there for people so if you like the content and you appreciate the knowledge I'm handing down okay so some you might think is really basic but other guys it's a big it's a big stepping stone to get the basic knowledge in there when you're going from install for instance to, to service and repair so all right like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one